This morning, we are looking at all of the major ways the Supreme Court's historic ruling on presidential immunity will impact not only Donald Trump's legal cases, but the future of all American presidents. With us now to discuss this, CNN legal analyst Norm Eisen and CNN presidential historian Tim Naftali. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for coming in on this really consequential uh, day. Norm, first to you. We know the expression, no person is above the law. We say it all the time uh, it, it as part of just conversation. Did the court just decide that actually there is someone above the law, the president? Sarah, uh, even the majority in this reprehensible opinion that represents a fundamental break with two and a half centuries of American tradition pays lip service to the idea. They write, of course, no one is above the law. But then they claim allowing the president to do things like commit political assassinations has no legal redress. Well, what's the meaning of their proclamation that a president is not above the law if he can engage in those kinds of conducts? This is one of the worst opinions in American history from the Supreme Court a number of members of whom have fatal conflicts. They were involved in the, they have spouses or other involvement, Alito and Thomas, in the underlying conduct. And they have indeed put the president above the law for certain actions. This is for official acts. They were very specific. Uh, this not personal actions, but, but official acts. Tim, I wanna get to you about what this means for the role of the presidency moving forward, because it was based on Donald Trump's case and directly affects him, but it affects all presidents going forward, correct? Indeed, and I think Donald Trump is the beneficiary of a struggle um, among um, constitutional experts over the effects of the pushback against the imperial presidency in the Cold War. Uh, the court's majority includes people who were in administrations that faced, um, that were in the midst of scandals. They're, they're, they're uh, veterans of um, the George W. Bush administration, uh, of the Reagan administration. In, in many ways, the conservative majority seemed to be arguing some very old cases um, in an attempt to uh, remove the sort of Damocles, the possibility of uh, criminal prosecution over future presidents. But in doing so, they have opened the door to presidential abuses of power. If you think about the ways in which uh, Richard Nixon, Lyndon Johnson, John F. Kennedy, I want to make clear this is not a partisan problem. This is a presidential problem. The way in which they used national security to um, uh, authorize wiretaps, for example, the case of Nixon breaking into Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office, the ways in which they use their core constitutional authorities to abuse presidential power, you can see that yesterday's decision by the Supreme Court opens the door and actually protects future abuse of power by presidents. Tim, because you brought it up, I, I, I want to show the audience something. It was, a, it was sort of a joy to sort of go back in history and look at what happened with Nixon and, and really dig down into that. Um, I want to let people hear what Nixon said when he was asked a question about whether a president and what they do, if they're allowed to do something illegal uh, in the course of their job that would be illegal to anyone else uh, but the president. Here is how President Nixon responded when he was interviewed by Mr. Frost. When the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. By definition. Exactly. When the president does it, that means it is not illegal. So in this context, with what the court has decided, Norm, does this mean that Nixon basically would have been able to do what he did completely legally without any recourse? Uh, you could have had uh, substantial portions uh, of... Uh, Richard Nixon's wrongdoing that drove him from office because it was conducted from the Oval Office using his official advisors to engage in uh, break-ins, a wide variety of other illegal activity. 
would have been impossible to prosecute. Essentially what the Supreme Court majority, again, including terribly conflicted justices who have no business sitting on this case under any standard of judicial ethics. What they've done, Sarah, is rewrite American history. It goes all the way back to the founding American idea. We overthrew King George III because we did not want a ruler to have this kind of absolute immunity. And uh, the Supreme Court has now uh, altered that. Uh, and we have to be honest that we're facing a major party political candidate who has said he wants to be a dictator on day one. He wants to assert autocratic powers. They've just given him uh, a license for dictatorship uh, within the purview of official acts. That should be extremely alarming and it makes uh, this uh, momentous election really a referendum on the future of American democracy. And Norm, of course, you have the justices saying, look, no president should be um, prosecuted for doing their job, whether it is saying, look, we're going to send people to war or, uh, or something else. Um, but there are some real big questions that we will all be asking as to what constitute an official act and who gets to decide that. We will discuss that more in the days ahead. Norm Isom and Tim Naftali, thank you both so much uh, for your insight.